emotionally, mentally, and physically. We all do, guys. We all do. And so coming here has been life-giving. I just said to Stacy the other day, I've never known such family. I've never known it. And this is my family, guys. And I'm going to be here for the rest of my life doing this with you because I know with you, I will make it. I will make it and I will make it. Yes. Gloriously. That's right. That's Thank right. you. Very well. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. That is just wonderful. Guys, let's do this. Are you ready? Thank you so much, Jackie. That's just powerful. Okay, guys. Well, whether you've got the notes or not, I'm going to share something that's very life-changing. It's been very life-changing for me uh, just to teach and preach this message and uh, to get the revelation. The Lord gave me a very clear word uh, last week to begin a series on His house of prayer my father's house of prayer. And today we're part one. We're going to talk about healthy in the house of prayer, healthy in the house of prayer. Amen. Many people are languishing. Many people are infirmed. Many people are confused. They're disenchanted. The world is riddled. Listen, the world is riddled with racism with fear, with disease, with trauma, with confusion right now. But take heart because Jesus said these things would happen. He said they would happen. And he's so faithful. He, he, he's introducing a door out. He's introducing a door out. And that door leads into the Father's house of prayer. There's kindness there. There's healing. There's comfort. There's power. There's guidance. There's, there's light there. The Father is still. He still so loves the world, and He's restoring His house of prayer and inviting every single person on the planet into His house where there's power, there's love, there's light, and there's comfort. Of course, the world will never uh, be totally healed and at peace. The Bible is very clear about this. But those of us who are turning to the Lord can be totally healed and at peace. Amen. Now, John G. Lake, how many of you know who John G. Lake was? John G. Lake was a, an apostle with the global miracle healing ministry in the early 1900s. He founded the original healing rooms in Spokane, Washington. And remember that John uh, the, in, in Spokane was declared the healthiest city on in the world back in the 20s. That's how impacting John G. Lake's healing homes, uh, I mean, not healing homes, his healing rooms were there in Spokane. Well, hear me good, church. In May of 1920, John G. Lake moved to Portland, Oregon to start and oversee uh, an apostolic church. During this time, he had the following vision. Are you ready for the most powerful vision you've ever heard in your life? In his own words, John G. Lake says, On approaching the building, high in the atmosphere, I discerned millions of demons organized as a modern army. There were those demons who apparently acted as shock troops. They would charge with great ferocity, followed by a wave and yet another wave and yet another wave. Beloved, if you don't know, yes, yeah, right, Angela. If you don't, I thought of you and, uh, and one of our new members that just joined yesterday. Uh, she's also, Alice is also in Oregon. Beloved, if you don't know, Demons are over you in the air, in the atmosphere, and they want to steal, kill, and destroy your marriage, your health, your peace, everything. They are in the atmosphere, beloved. 
John G. Lake writes, after a little while I observed they're operating this restraining influence that constituted a barrier which they could not force themselves. They were utterly restrained over this barrier. John G. Lake sees these millions of demons, Linda Sue, and then he sees a barrier they can't penetrate. What is that barrier they can't penetrate? In amazement, I said to the angel, what does this mean? He said, such is the care for those that strive in unselfishness for God's best. Beloved, unselfish people are restraining the forces of hell. <clears throat> unselfish people. I discerned the, the heart of the angel was overburdened. In answer to this, the angel said, human selfishness and human pride have consumed and dissipated the very glory and heavenly power that God once gave from heaven to this movement that you've beheld tonight. Beloved, pride and human selfishness, self, we're, the world is eaten up with it right now, and the Lord wants to give us wisdom that the pressure that the world is feeling, the sickness, the racism, the hate, the confusion, all of this stuff, the trauma, the disease, it's rooted in pride, human pride and selfish and, and self uh, and selfishness. John G. Lake says, my heart cried out, angel, these are struggling. These people are struggling for want of an ideal. What constitu constitutes real Pentecost? What ideal should be held before the minds of men? During all this time, I had carried my Bible in my hand, he says. Reaching for the Bible, the angel opened to the book of Acts. Stop right there, church. Listen to me good. This is a marker moment. I found this prophecy many years ago, and it changed my life. This is a marker moment. The angel of the Lord shows up, flips the Bible open, points to the book of Acts. This is the reason that for decades I have pressed in to, to develop a book of Acts church because I knew this was anointed from the Lord, this vision that John G. had. I'm going to tell you, beloved, the, 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 the angel of the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is guiding us. He's guiding you and me to the book of Acts. This angel, he opens up to the book of Acts. He ran his finger down over the second page, that portion where the spirit of God came down from heaven and proceeding through the book of Acts to its great outstanding revelations and phenomena, he said, this is the Pentecost as God gave it through the heart of Jesus. This is the most powerful part of the vision. The angel says to John G. Lake, strive for this. Contend for this. Teach the people to pray for this. For this and this alone will meet the necessity of the human heart. And this alone will have the power to overcome the forces of darkness. When the angel was departing, he said, pray, pray, pray. Teach the people to pray. Prayer and prayer alone, much prayer, persistent prayer is the door of entrance into the heart of God. People have asked me over the years, James, why do you, why do you have two, two prayer meetings a day? Why do you have a prayer meeting a day? Why do you pray so much? Why are you so different than most pastors? Why are you... Well, it's because of this. It's because of this. It's because of me fasting and praying. And when I go pray, he says, pray more. And then when I go pray, he says, tell everybody else to pray more. It's constantly, God's constantly driving me to pray more and to drive people to encourage and guide people to pray more. It is the heart of God. It's what the, it's the human need of the hour. The people that can help you are the people that are prayed up. I'm just going to tell you, those are the people that can help you get breakthrough. 
You don't need breakthrough by more dogmatic human intellect. We need glory. We need anointing. And because of your, and I want to say thank you to Deborah Karash. Bless you, my friend, and thank you. We love you, sister. Good to see you today. I'm on page three of my notes. God's, uh, God's house is a house of prayer for all nations, and the Spirit of God dwells there. And we know the Bible says where the Spirit is, there's freedom. There's thousands of prayer houses of prayer springing up in every nation. Have you found the one you belong in, beloved? There, God, it's not a, we're not a cult on a hill that's doing something this far-fetched. No, the Lord's doing this. He's doing this, man. God is raising up thousands upon thousands of houses of prayer. They're going, the God, is, God is highlighting the book of Acts to them. He's saying, contend for this, pray for this, contend and live like this. The nations need this freedom now more than ever. Will you follow the Spirit up into the Father's happy holy mountain and bring other people with you? He's there waiting in his house of prayer. <laughs> Amen. Bless you, Leah. I see you there, precious. Thank you for joining. Isaiah 56, verse 7 is a prophetic scripture, and this is for our generation. Did you know that this is for our generation? Are you ready, beloved? Look at what he says. Here's what it says, Isaiah 56, 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful or make them happy in my house of prayer. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. For all nations. Somebody say, for all nations. Beloved, I'm going to tell you something. And I want to speak to our nations in this church, Karen and, and Elna and Sahar and Sanan. Uh, Sanan or Sahar, please translate this. We have not forgotten you. Hold the line. I understand what I'm doing, what we're doing as a church. We're building the foundation so we can have, it's, and we've got nations, many nations that have joined this church. We've not forgotten about you. Hold, hold tight. Amen. But let me tell you something. This is what God is highlighting to me, all nations. God began to highlight Africa the last two weeks and gave me a word about Africa a couple days ago. Africa continent. Ha uh, Father Heart Church members, don't lose heart. Hold tight because we're going to come and organize this thing and we will have a prophetic explosion all over Africa. Hold the line. This is God's will, but you're going to have to give me and our staff a little bit more time to organize this. We're not there yet. Let us keep organizing. You hold tight. Come on, Karen. I see you there, precious. One of our members in Kenya. Hold the line. We will reorganize our international movement soon. Point two on page four. There is total health in Father's house. There's total health. There's total health in Father's house. John 7, 23. Look at what Jesus said. He said, why are you angry with me for making a man's whole body well? Listen, God's heart and his very nature is to make people's whole body well. This is what it says. John 7, 23. The Pharisees were angry with Jesus for making a man's whole body, his entire body. The King James is every whit whole. And just understand that the anointing will stir up self-righteous hypocrites. I mean, there are people that they will accuse me and our church and you if you do something because they're jealous, they're insecure, or they're offended, there are people that will not appreciate your good works. You could make a man's whole body well, and they could just sit and just attack you and just not be able to read between the lines. And, and these Pharisees, these self-righteous self people, why are you angry with me for making a whole man, uh, uh, the, this man's entire body well? But it's the nature of God to make people whole. 
His love and power gets this done. Many people, and I'm gonna, I want to shift our attention. See, some of our church members, you're, you've been suffering with physical infirmity. We've got the remedy here today. Amen. Just hold tight. We've got the remedy. We're going to inspire that faith. You're going to see yourself as that, as that person that will not quit praying and contending and believing. But it's the nature of God to make people whole. Now, I want to focus on spiritual vision and spirit, your spiritual eyes for a minute because God highlighted people's spiritual eyes, Linda, today. Here's what he highlighted. See, many people need their, 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 their families, your family's spiritual eyes. They need to be healed. I, I got to stop right here. I hear the Holy Spirit speaking about stop complaining. I just heard the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to, God didn't tell me who this is for, but I want to tell you something. When you're complaining, you can't see the solution. It is impossible because you're so fixated on the problem, you can't see the solution. Beloved, stop complaining. You can never complain about anything, anytime. It never does good. It's always the enemy lurking, trying to upset you and shipwreck your life. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so that's a little prophetic dove trail the Lord had me go down. But watch this. Many people need their families' eyes healed, spiritual eyes. The Spirit of God, I heard the Spirit of God say this, if you will build a wall of prayer in your home, I will break through in my light, with my light. You will begin to have spiritual vision if you will make your house, come on somebody, are you listening, a house of prayer, you got to make your house a wall of prayer. <clears throat> Remember John G. Lake, that angel said, book of Acts, this alone will fill the needs of the human soul. I mean, you, Dr. Phil ain't going to do it for you. Oprah sure won't do it. Phil Donahue, if you're from the 80s, that one, he won't do it. Listen, we need to be a house of prayer. The book of Acts is the way. And the Lord gave me that word of knowledge. God will break through in your home with light if you, if you, if you will make, build the wall of prayer in your home. Many need a breakthrough in their physical health, financial health, emotional health, relational health. You can have this breakthrough. Amen. You can have this breakthrough. Now, God will do his part, and he's very kind and gentle with us. God will do his part. He's faithful to do his. If he says he'll do it, he'll do it. The question is, is not him. The question is, will we do our part? We must do our part. God won't do our part, and we can't do his part. We are a team working with the Lord uh, and we're a team, you know, I, I understand this. I'm working with the Lord to do what he needs to do in my life. I know I need him and I know he expects me to do my part. Now I heard this as a word of knowledge. Somebody's wondering if you're forgiven. Think of this. Jesus sent, God sends his son to die on the cross. Something doesn't work right in our life we get sick we get broken relationships or whatever look at this and then the enemy accuses us making us think we're not really forgiven for our sin and that's why we're sick or we haven't gotten our breakthrough yet because your sin is still just not forgiven beloved god is much better than that he sent his son as an unspotted lamb to die for your sin. He totally, you're forgiven. The enemy's lying. He's accusing you. Somebody needed to hear that. Father, I'd break off that accusation right now, and I declare, you're forgiven. Forgiven. Totally, not a little bit. Totally forgiven. Like you never did it. That's the only kind of forgiveness heaven knows. You never did it. You got to forgive it. Forgive it. Forgive it in you. Forgive yourself. Just forgive yourself. You have to believe this. One time the Lord said, my grace will not 
touch your fear, uh, James. My grace will not touch your fear. I was afraid of God. And he was like, my grace and mercy can't touch that. You have to believe, James, that you're totally forgiven or you're going to be tormented. Amen? And see, I'm sure the enemy, he keeps a lot of people sick. Because if you believe that you're not well yet because you've sinned and grieved the Lord, how can you pray through to get your blessing and your breakthrough? Because you don't think it's going to do any good because you're still stuck thinking that you're not forgiven. Totally deception from the enemy. Now, many well-known, let's change gears a little bit. Many well-known, accurate prophets have told us that there will be Goshen cities of refuge in the future. And this is true. The Bible is clear that there will be another world war that will be more devastating than the two that we know about. Beloved, listen to me real carefully. I'm t- from the Bible, we know that in the last days, there will be global warfare. Global warfare. We know this from the Word of God. We also know from the prophets that, that God's raising up these, these myriad of houses of prayer. They're being planted, and they're going to be nestled into these cities of refuge. I mean, they're play, how many of you have heard the prophets prophesying about these cities of refuge? I mean, accurate ones. I'm telling you, beloved, there are coming. A bunch of you have heard of them. Good job. You've been listening to the prophets. Prophets have been prophesying for 20, 30 years. I know some of them that have been hearing about cities of refuge that are going to function as a house of prayer. God is setting up these thousands and thousands of houses of prayer because there is coming a global world war and more pandemics. Corona has nothing on what's coming. It's very clear a third of the earth is going to die from pestilence, the Bible uh, declares. We are going to see many, 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 many judgments from the Lord. Don't be deceived. Read the word. But God is not judging me or you. We're going to be nestled into the house of prayer. It's just like Egypt. Remember Goshen? Remember the plagues are breaking out all over Egypt, except not the part of Egypt, the province of Goshen, where the Israelites were. Beloved, (laughs) I promise you, God is going to have a fully healthy, functioning, thriving church in the midst of the global mess. There will be these pockets of people like God like Goshen Israelites that are going to be glory, glorious and radiant with the presence of God. Many will be martyred, according to the Bible. But here's why I'm saying this right now. We're not wanna, we don't want to develop this. I'm saying this because the Spirit of God highlighted this to me earlier. Amen. The Spirit of God is having us do this. Let me tell you right now. Um, this is a prophecy. <laughs> this is a prophecy. Amen. I'm telling you that this is coming. We already know three years before Corona, God had us start this online church because we're forerunners. We're pioneers. We're prophetic forerunners. We are going to listen to what the Spirit says, and we're going to do it. Well, I'm telling you what the Spirit's saying about the future. and Nobody knows the hour. Nobody knows the exact year. All we know is we have to keep speaking what He speaks and doing what He says to do. But I want to tell you something. Many entire denominations will fall into this Book of Acts daily order. Don't criticize them. Give them the grace that you need. Don't be thinking of how we're so we're so in tune and they're so uh, neglectful. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's a spirit of the. That's the enemy working through you. You can't win people if you're blaming them. Amen. You don't have a mantle to win them you don't deserve the mantle to win people if you're too busy blaming them we want to be a door to encourage people we're not beating you up come learn how to prophesy come learn how to pray come learn how to cast demons out come learn how to heal the sick we want to encourage people we want to serve people and not blame them 
But the Spirit of the Lord is doing this. We don't have to do it in our flesh. We can't do it in our flesh, but we don't, we don't want to try to force it in our flesh either. Turns our family off to the gospel. Turns our friends, our cities, our local uh, pastoral relationships and, and, and the whole nine yards. But here's what I, a phrase I heard the Holy Spirit say. Do you see yourself in the army of God yet? Do you see yourself in the army of God? How will you have lasting victory if you're not doing what Jesus said, what Paul said when he said, Ephesians 6, he said, we wrestle dark powers in high places. We wrestle dark powers in high places. Guys, God has called us to join the army. He said, uh, well, we'll read those scriptures later. But why, why a Sunday family message like this? I mean, what in the world, Linda Sue, right? Why in the world? I, I thought we were just going to have a sun, nice Sunday message. B beloved, we've been having too many nice Sunday messages. We need meat now. We are one of the reasons most of the people that I know were totally unprepared for Corona is because they did not have a prophetic pastor. Oh, hear me. They didn't have somebody that bathes their messages in prayer and fasting. They, they, and they were totally unprepared. Their families totally uh, unprepared for what was coming because they did not have sh a shepherd with uh, that were people. And, and, the, and the meat that we're feeding might be rare to people, but that doesn't matter. We've got to draw people in with love and mercy and kindness, listen, and authority from on high we don't need another clever uh, gimmicky sermon we need truth meat and power yes we need love yes we need nurture but we need to be strong right now point three page five the persistent widow's prayer answered in luke 18 verse 1 then Jesus spoke a parable to them that men ought always pray and not lose heart. This parable, the, the point of it is that men might always pray and not faint or stop or quit or lose heart. Number two, he says, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God or regard man. I mean, this guy was pretty, this guy was a drag, wasn't he? He's going, he doesn't care about God, and he doesn't care about men. That's a bad judge. And Jesus is saying, using the worst possible example to make his point, verse 3, now there was a, a widow in that city, and she came to him and said, get justice for me. Oh, I wanted to welcome Dino. I saw Dean pop in. Bless you, my brother. Love you, man. Verse 3, there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my enemy, my adversary. And the judge would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God or regard man, yet because this widow is troubling me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Though he bears long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? And here's what Jesus is saying. In the end times, when I return, will I find this kind of persevering prayer faith on the earth. God is asking his people to learn to pray without ceasing. And he calls it faith. And this widow asked and she received because she kept asking, 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 asking. And the Lord says, shall not God avenge his own elect? You're his elect, beloved. If you're sick, he wants to help you, but you're going to have to be like this widow. You've got to keep asking. 
You've got to keep asking. If your marriage is unhealthy, you've got to keep asking. You got to keep asking. That widow, she's me and she's you sometimes. What do you need from God? Financial security, uh, relational health, um, a healing in your body, in your mind, in your mind. Keep asking like this widow. Make your house a book of Acts, daily house of prayer. Anoint yourself. Here's mine. Anoint yourself every single day and pray over yourself. Anoint your house if there's strife every day. Don't quit. I heard the Lord just now. He said, don't quit. Word of knowledge just now. He said, don't quit. That's why he said in verse 8, will, will, will God find this kind of faith on the earth when the Son of Man returns? What he's saying is, yes, I will. I'm going to impregnate a generation preceding my return. I'm going to impart and impregnate people with the, with the burden for prayer. God is putting this burden in his church global right now. It's a burden he's putting in people right now. <laughs> I like it, Tisha. Tisha said, I'm going to put on my big girl pants. <laughs> Tisha, where'd you find that? that emoji so what do you need from God are you as persistent as this widow was are you that persistent will you nag the Lord do you believe Jesus that's what it comes down to number four page six pray over yourself over your home and your family every day Every day. I, the Lord told me this. Years ago, the Lord began to tell me, do this every day, James. And he told me to do it for people sometimes every day. Every once in a while, he'd say, pray for them every day. We saw Sharon and, and Eunice and, and Chrissy will, will tell you, we saw, uh, we saw literally, we saw three people. Remember this, Eunice? We saw three people healed of cancer in one year three people we prayed for them every day fasted for them and prayed for them every single day we saw three people healed of cancer one year a few years ago but i want to tell you if you're busy blaming other people other people in your family other people at work other people at church if you're busy blaming others about your situation you cannot have God's breakthrough because you're talking you're talking to you're gossiping and talking to people about the problem you're so busy talking to people and gossiping and slandering other people and blaming people that you can't you don't have enough time to talk to Jesus for your healing amen come on somebody are you listening if we're so busy blaming other people, complaining and gossiping about situations that we're not that are not lining up and giving us peace, then we're too we are it takes so much focus to talk to Jesus asking for healing. You're so busy bodying talking about other people and blaming people and complaining, you can't talk to Jesus and get your breakthrough. You only have so much room for passion church. You only have so much room for words. Talk to the man. And, 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 and it's not any, there's nothing wrong with counseling coming to me or somebody else and saying, man, I do not want to dishonor my spouse. I do not want to dishonor my pastor. I do not want to dishonor my, my, my friends, my boss. My, that's not you complaining if you go and you're really, really trying to get a grip on your situation. That's not you blaming and complaining. That's okay to do. But listen, some of you that are giving input and giving feedback and you notice that people are blaming other people and, 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 and condemning other people, you need, to get them, you need to give them loving instruction and say, look, I think I see a problem. You're so busy worrying about what people aren't doing for you that you're just self-absorbed and you got to snap out of that. Get your focus on you and on the Lord. And I say again, pray, pray. 
pray and do good and bless your enemies, never slander them. Never. You got to never be able, you, you never justified, you're never justified doing that. Number five, let's get off that quick before we, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I'm, I, you know me, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Number five, find your praying church. Fan. By the way, in case you guys can't tell, I'm, I'm preaching this like it's just a, a normal pastor's sermon. This is a, this is nothing more than a prophetic word. <laughs> this is what God. I'm framing it as it's just a sermon, a simple outline. But this is what God gave me in prayer. This is a prophetic word. God said, "Tell you find that praying church family. Find your align with your praying church family." He said, "Explain the Acts." This God gave me a word of knowledge. Explain Acts, Acts chapter thirteen. Look at it in verse one. I'm going to explain it. Now, in that church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. So are you in a church where there's prophets, number one? Are there prophets in your church? And then uh, in verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work I've called them to. Are you fasting with the prophets? Explain this, the Lord said, because what you you need to understand, beloved, that this is going to solve the problems in your life. This is what's going to give you the breakthrough, the healing and the breakthrough that you need. Look, look what happened. The Holy Spirit broke in and said, separate Paul and Barnabas. They got clear instruction on their mission as a church because they prayed and they fasted and the lord said tell you this i got this earlier the lord said tell you this father heart church because we pray and fast and we prophesy the lord said because of this we have divine direction beloved let me introduce something to you if we can do this as a church body with me as a shepherd and other under under shepherds you can do it individually. Fall into order and do what we do. Do what we do. Because watch, if you do what we do, you have the breakthrough too. Amen. I'm walking in breakthrough constantly in my life. Not because I'm special, but because I've learned how to align with the heart of the Father to make my life a house of prayer. Make my home a house of prayer got to fast you got to prophesy you got to minister to the lord and it's critical that we align with god's true praying church right now it's critical people who are isolated right now are more vulnerable than they were a few years ago amen people that are isolated thank you steve i see you brother people that are isolating themselves listen beloved you know with corona and the things going on it's not okay right now that if you isolate yourself right now. Don't do it. You could get away with it a little bit more a few years ago, but now you don't want to fall into independence and isolation now. We need the body right now. We need the prophets. We need direction. And see, some people, they've been, and, and I want to give grace right here, but some people have been not being close to the Lord for the last five or ten years and they're feeling that frustration right now, and that's where you're getting some of the conspiracy theories and QAnon people. They're falling into deep, dark deception with some of those conspiracy theories because they've not been aligning the last five or ten years getting healthy spiritually and emotionally. And I want you to be aligned right now so you can stay healthy spiritually and emotionally and you don't bite the bait of some deception that the enemy brings in, in a year or five when the next corona or something comes. Be wise and obey the Bible. It says come together. Don't forsake the assembling of coming together. And it also says in Hebrews 13, submit yourself to the Leaders in your life, the spiritual leaders, listen, because they watch for your soul. Who is your spiritual pastor? Who is your leader? Submit to them, the Bible says. If you're alone and isolated, you're not obeying the Bible, and you're not being wise. Amen? And the Lord said, tell you, this has never been done before. 
this in-gathering of millions of people on the Internet and in brick-and-mortar churches all over the nations. He said it's never been done before. And this Antioch principle of Acts 13 will release much healing, deliverance, and revelatory light into your home. Right now, so many people, when corona hit, is it the devil? Is it Satan? Is it the human, some some demonized man that's just thought this up? Or is it the devil? Is it the Lord? Or what is it? Well, you don't have to wonder if you're hanging and fasting with the prophets. The Lord will make it clear. It might take a minute, but the Lord will make it clear what's going on. You don't have to be confused and deceived. Again, divine direction is ours because we pray and fast as they as they did. We're on page seven. We're almost done. Page seven, number six. You can do this, beloved. Oh, I know I'm giving some quite a mountain for us to climb, but I want to tell you that you can do this. Everything that we're talking about is totally biblical. Wouldn't it be unfair, bro, Brother Steve? Wouldn't it be unfair if God asks us to do something that was too hard to do? That would be so unfair. God's not unfair. But I want to tell you that the Father is very gentle and patient with us all, isn't he? We can take baby steps out of lukewarmness and out of prayerlessness and out of apathy and, yes, out of laziness. And out of disobedience, I could throw that one in there. We can take baby steps out. It's amazing about God's nature that he gives us, he, 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 he doesn't mind us taking baby steps towards him. In fact, that's mostly what I think I've been able to do in my 20-something years of Christianity. I don't know that I've, I, I mean, I sure try to take those leaps and bounds, but I, I look back and I go, I don't know that I've really come as far as I thought I have or that I would like to, you know, uh, I think on our best day, I think baby steps is the best we can do. Without the Father's gentleness and his patience with us, he's pretty awesome, isn't he? I mean, he's so patient with me. I got to give it to you because he's so, I know. He, after 20-something years walking so close to the Lord, as close as I know to do, and I know I'm like hard at it but it, i i go man i would think that i'm i would be further along in every area than i am i'm going i'm not i'm just not that far along after 20 something years you got to be patient with me because it, it's just it's impossible to be any better you know and i i mean it, you you just look at it from those lenses and you go you have to be patient with people because people are really stumbly I mean, you are. I, I, I don't need to know you to know that you are. You're a humanoid. <laughs> You're weak and stumbly. We are prone to staggering and drifting, every one of us. So we can't take this message and beat somebody up with it. I can't beat you up with it. I need grace. You need grace. And Esmeralda, like Esmeralda said, speed can kill. Speed can kill. That's right, Esmeralda. <laughs> she joined our church yesterday. She's precious. And I want to tell you, the Lord said, address this. You can stop people pleasing. Because the, the, the Lord said, there's somebody here that the power of God ha has been quenched in your life. Because of the people pleasing. The power of God has been quenched in your life because of people. Listen, if you let people steal the glory of the Lord from your life, every time you press in to do something great for God, and here comes that same old person that quenches your spirit, and you give in to it, you cave to their intimidation or whatever it is, you better buck up and you better say, no, I'm going. I'm going for it. And I don't mean leaving your spouse going. I'm talking about loving your enemies. Amen. Sometimes it's your spouse. And, and you going on further and deeper in God. Whatever the case. You can't be. Nobody needs to be afraid of another human being. Nobody on the planet. If nobody should be able to stop you or me or anybody else from, having, from being hot in God. 
And I heard another one here. Are you ready for this? The Spirit of God says you do not have to be on medication the rest of your life. Oh, man, I got that earlier this morning in prayer. I said I'm going to edit my notes. I'm going to put it in there. Somebody needs to hear this. You don't need to be on medication the rest of your life. you got to learn to be like this widow, this widow that constantly comes to the Lord saying, God, I want healing from this once and for all. And you like that widow, you keep coming. Amen. Don't give up until your breakthrough is here. You can do it. You can do this. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. All things means pray your healing through. Pray your deliverance through. You can do it. Number seven, will you make the commitment? Will you make the commitment? In case you can't know, we believe in preaching with application. (laughs) Everything that I'm talking to you about, we're giving you hints along the way. Will you do it? You can do it. You got to do it. But this section is, will you do it? Matthew 26, 40. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to He said to Peter, what? Could you not watch with me for one hour? The Lord is confronting Peter's prayerlessness. What? Dude, I'm about to go be slaughtered. I told you my heart's heavy, and here you are sleeping. Come on, Peter. You got to up your commitment a little bit here, he's saying. Then he says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is weak. Again, a second time, Jesus came, found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away again. Then he came to his disciples and said, Are you still sleeping and resting? (laughs) Isn't that interesting? Now, I know without a doubt that what Jesus, Jesus was not condemning them. Right, Mary? He was not condemning them. Nope, he was not going to, you know what he was doing? He was just gently reminding them, strengthen your spiritual muscle. Strength, look how gentle, look how methodical and gentle and patient. He didn't browbeat them. He said, I'm, I'm training you. I'm okay. Yeah, I understand you're still weak. He said, the, the spirit right here in verse 41, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, isn't it, boys? Like, I know you're trying. I know really in your heart you really want to do this, but you're, you just don't have, the, you don't have the spiritual muscles yet. You haven't developed yet. But I guarantee you they've developed later. They were still young, young men right here. Turned into some of the greatest men of God. Amen. Crucified upside down, Peter was. I mean, beloved, here's why I put this in here. Jesus is calling you to a commitment too. But he also is saying to you, I understand that your your flesh is weak. I understand. But I want to still give you the ultimate goal is to develop and learn to pray and watch without ceasing. I don't want to give you, let you totally off the hook, but I want you to know, boys, I understand. And he's speaking to you. I understand that you're still a little weak here, but I want to call you up to another level. Matthew eleven twelve 12 says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing and forceful men lay hold on it, hold of it. Are you ready to forcefully lay hold on this? Are you ready to commit to be a sort of a kingdom person that's forcing the issue with God? From the days until John the Baptist until now, The kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing, not forcefully advancing in the flesh. Put the sword down, Peter. Put the fist down. Don't slander people on Facebook. Don't go there. This is forcing God to move through prayer and fasting. And forceful men are laying hold on it to pull strongholds down. Luke 16, 6. Since that time, the good news of the kingdom of God is being preached and everyone is forcing his way into it. 
Everyone's forcing his way into the kingdom of God. Beloved, do you know why he says that like that? Colleen, here's why he says it. Because it doesn't, God doesn't just hand it to you in your lap. We have to press, force our way into the kingdom of God. You got to force. You got to press. And are you willing to do this for your breakthrough? Some of you have a home life that's got turmoil in it, and you can press it, pray it through. You can pray it through. <clears throat> One time, <clears throat> now you guys know my ex-wife. She divorced me. I brought it before our church leaders. This has been a while, and, and, and she chose to divorce me, and I made it clear to our church staff. I even had my ex-wife talk to one of our leaders. Beloved, let me tell you something. The one time, one time uh, there was turmoil in our house, and the Lord said, "James, play this song and declare that that uh, that uh, animosity or something like that. I forget the word an- that he used, animosity or strife. I think it was strife. Pray that that is broken off." And I said, "I so I picked my guitar up and I began to sing and declare and pray the prophetic prayer back to the Lord. Strife is broken in the name of Jesus, beloved. Let me tell you something." And, and and I promise to goodness, you know, you get some people, they make excuses for this and that. I'm not making an excuse, but it was her. It was on her end. She was not being a nice person. She had a period there where she was just falling away from Jesus, and it was just not pretty. But listen to this, my, my friends. I'm going to get ready to close here. As soon as I prayed that prayer, something broke off of that house, and joy was temporarily restored. Beloved, I'm telling you, there are demons trying to upset the tenor in your home. And if you will make it a place of prayer and not a place of complaining, you can see a lot of breakthrough. Just don't quit. So I want to ask, anybody can do this, our guests or our church members. But I want to ask, will you commit to one I want to call you to a commitment, if you will. One prayer meeting with Father Heart Church a week. Just one. 30 minutes. That's all it is. One per week. They did it daily in the book of Acts. Will you give the Lord one day? One day. If you've not, many of you are already doing this. One day a week. Just pick one day a week. Look at the schedule on uh, fatherheartchurch.com slash schedule. It's updated. Just look and see. One day a week. And then let me or Stacy know which day it is. And let me tell you, we want, we love, now for our leaders, we're doing this anyway because all of our leaders are required to have at least one day a week where they pray, at least one day with the church on Zoom. But I want to offer it for all of our church members. Uh, if you're interested, we will gently hold you accountable if you want to pick a week. I mean, pick one day a week, one 30 days, just commit to one. What a great commitment. It's just one, but I believe the Lord is going to call you to commit to daily because they did it daily in the book of Acts, and I just believe that. But you can start with just one. Just let me or Stacy know which day works best for you. Esmeralda, Stacy, Esmeralda, if you'll take notes here. Esmeralda, and you guys can even type them in the comments if you want to. If you if you've already if you already know the time, if not, let us know what it is. And I want to promise you something that you will encounter breakthrough because God is faithful. We've shown you from the scriptures that if you commit, God will commit to you, and He'll do it. They pray daily in the book of Acts, and I believe this should be our life goal at some point to be able to pray like that widow, like they did in the book of Acts daily. I'm doing it. Many are doing it in our church right now. Now, if you don't do it, now listen to this. If you don't do it daily with us, beloved, will you do it daily by yourself or with your family in your home? Daily is where it's at. 
crying out to God daily, if it's healing for, and, and don't stop just because you get healed or your finances get better or your marriage gets better. Don't stop. If this is your lifestyle, because remember that vision with John G. Lake, those millions of demons, millions of demons above him and people that were unselfish and sanctified in God, they would, they had a barrier over their home. And we simply offer up what the Spirit is saying in this church. We, we have to be gentle with the nations as we call them into this. God's doing this all over the nations. We're going to be gentle. We cannot accuse people. We cannot judge people. We simply offer up what the Spirit is saying. And this online revival is making a great impact, but we have only just begun. We're going to continue to tell people all over the world what the Lord is saying. And you can follow us as we follow Christ. I mean, follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, YouTube, uh, you know, uh, Facebook, uh, in, in our, our constant contact email list, Instagram, follow us, follow us, follow us. We'll keep you in the loop on what the Spirit's saying. And yes, there will be persecution and those who seek to defile me and you but I want to tell you something. We will continue, right, Lisa? We will continue to do exactly what the Spirit shows us corporately. Many, many people in this church get prophecies, visions, words, and dreams. We will not stop, and we will do what the Lord shows us. Anybody remember that dream, that, that vision or dream that uh, Ann had the other day where I was leading the prayer movement and that 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 attack from the enemy came in just rushing right in beloved all those things are just god confirming we're right on track we're right on track we're right on track and by the grace of god nothing will harm us and nothing will stop us the last point i want to make i'm going to make this very quick by faith you will see results if you will make your house a house of prayer you're going to see results hebrews 11 1 now the faith now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You can't see it. You, you can't see it tangibly right now. You cannot see your healing. You can't see your marriage better. But you've got to get in that place of prayer that you know that God is faithful. You can't see the, your house at peace. You can't see your breakthrough with, with finances. And, but you've got to believe by faith, though you can't see it right now, you're asking for it until that breakthrough happens. Amen. I could give you tons of scriptures. Hannah praying for a son. She kept weeping and wailing and got a boy. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, prayed, God, spare my life. And God added years to his life because he prayed, he wept, and moved the hand of God so much that the Spirit told Isaiah, go back and prophesy to Hezekiah, you shall live and not die. Jacob wrestled the angel. Jacob wrestled the angel all, li all night long seeking a refuge from his brother Esau that, was, that he was afraid might come try to kill him. Wrestled the angel all night long and got his blessing from God. The widow here, we must pray and not faint. We've talked about today that this is message is entitled healthy healthy in the house of prayer relationships can be healthier now vocation can be healthier your job your assignment in the lord your sexual man can be healthier you get breakthrough there your relationships your emotions your finances your mental health <clears throat> all of the above, all of the above in God's house of prayer because God's very nature is to make men every whit whole. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we humble ourselves as we reverence you and your house, God. We thank you, God, that you are giving us the instruction we need to live 
the way that you are calling your people to live. It's never changed. It's always been about the book of Acts. We've fallen into a stupor, God. Thank you for shaking us and gently removing the blinders and gently reorganizing our paradigm so that we can be healed and so that we can heal others and make them whole. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Give the Lord a hand praise. We just love you, Lord God. We thank, we worship you, and we thank you, Father, more breakthrough. And may you impart the spirit of prayer on each person here listening right here today. In Jesus' name. Okay, who needs prayer? It's time for us to pray uh, for those that need prayer every week. You can come back here every single Sunday at 11. You can come back here and you can come uh, pray and you can come receive prayer uh, and you can come hear the word of the Lord. We're going to give it to you just like the Lord says. I promise you we're committed to this, right, Anna? Sahar, we're committed. We're going to tell you what the Lord says and we're not interested in what man says. I don't even want to be the preacher of this church. We better let Jesus preach or I can just fold the tent up and go home. Amen. That's right, Yasmin. We're going to let Jesus talk because we need Jesus' word right now real bad. We need his word real bad. Amen. Real bad. And we're, we understand it. It's, it's urgent. It's urgent. All right. Love you, Sin Amelia. Thank you for you. We love you very much. Okay, everybody that's over on watching on Facebook Live, thank you, Martha. Love you, Martha. Thank you for all that you are to us. Bless you. Listen, guys, uh, if you need prayer for anything at all, go ahead and come over from Facebook Live right on over to the Zoom right now. Stacy, if you'll put that on the Father Heart Church Facebook page, the link for them to join us over on Zoom. And then, guys, we are going to close this uh, broadcast, but we're going to stay right back over here on Zoom. We've got about 45 of us over here on Zoom right now, and uh, we, want to, um, we want to invite anybody that needs prayer that's over on Facebook Live, come right on over, and we'd love to minister to you, okay? <clears throat> okay. Um, we're going to close the Facebook Live broadcast now. Thank you for joining us over there on Facebook. Love you all.